welfare workers were literally sent out to neighborhoods to apprise people of their welfare benefits, of course, provided there was no man in the house. My question, Bob, is were the same welfare workers dispatched to white neighborhoods as well? And if so, why didn't as many white people start having that same percentage of kids outside of wedlock as blacks did? Because the, the social scientists, Cloward and Tivin, uh, after the rush riot, targeted black people mm-hmm. um, because they were uh, accessible and also they were able to define welfare uh, away f- uh, uh, from social insurance to reparations. So they, they convinced black folks, plus they, 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 they demonized the, 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 the nuclear family. They said that the nuclear family is Eurocentric and therefore racist, and they were supported by the women's movement. They was also supported by the black power movement. Um, uh, and so, they, so the, the, the black community was targeted because of the Watch Riots and also because of the history of slavery and discrimination. Mm-hmm. They, they, and their goal, Cloud and Piven said it, they want to promote income redistribution. And the way you promote income redistribution is bankrupt the existing system. So, and they did that. Do you remember in 73 when New York went bankrupt? Mm-hmm. John Lindsay was the mayor. So they have been, their agenda has been in place for 50 years. And so they separated work from income. The, the, the Black Power Movement supported the women's movement. Um, out of wedlock births began to soar as welfare benefits uh, uh, occurred at a time when the unemployment rate in New York was 4%. So it wasn't in response to any unemployment. It's just that we changed the culture of entitlement. Mm-hmm. Plus, you know, that there was a cultural meltdown, too, with the hippies and talking about tune out, get high, turn off. So you had these terrible combination of, of, of forces but it was driven primarily, it, it wouldn't have been uh, as effective until the government actually opened offices and recruited people. When the welfare department used to require pregnant women to declare, to declare the paternity of the father, ACLU stepped in and filed a lawsuit saying it was a violation of the privacy rights of these moms. Social, they stopped delivering social services to pregnant women because they said it's not a sickness, it's not. It, and, and so you had this combination, and, and the liberals who Cloud and Pittman predicted that school dropout rates will occur, drug addiction will occur, uh, all of the things that they predicted in their paper came true. My guest is Bob Woodson, Sr., founder and president of the Woodson Center. The website is woodsoncenter.org. Bob, do you have any kind of relationship at all with Jesse Jackson and or Al Sharpton? And if so, all the things you've just now told us, what is their response to that? They're silent. They, they, they don't say anything in response to it. Um, and, and they sort of leave me alone because they know 80 percent of my closest friends are ex-something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> have you had a conversation slash debate with either with either of them oh yeah i was on meet the press um in the 90s with jesse jackson uh with johnny cochran i was on there with johnny cochran and jesse jackson uh i've been on pbs uh J- jim they a news hour early on and mm-hmm. jesse and i went at it for 23 minutes mm-hmm. and all i did was replay his statements I said that uh, you said that the that that the um, that the, the, the that the victimizer might have knocked you down, but the victim has to get up. I said, <laughs> do you still believe that, or were you not telling the truth when you said it? <laughs> well, Bob. He also said, in, I, I got him in '78 when he says that the biggest crisis facing youth today is is the moral. Uh, is, Moral decadence mm-hmm. of the young people that that they I, I, I'm I'm not quoting I'm paraphrasing him is that they have a moral and spiritual crisis and until that is addressed no amount of programs or anything would help that's what he said in '78. Bob, we're going to have to leave. I we're going to have to, him at the American Enterprise Institute. Bob, we're going to have to leave it there. Bob Woodson, founder, president, Woodson Center. Again, web, website is woodsoncenter.org. Bob, as always, thank you very much for taking the time. I really appreciate it. 
Thank you, and thanks for producing that film, Larry. You got it.